Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Stories Across Cultures. Today we want to bring you to one of our favourite spots here in Beijing City. Hey. Can you imagine actually a few hundred years ago behind these was the biggest slum in Beijing City? This area is known as Qianmen, the southern gate of Imperial City in the last dynasty in China's history. The gate has been served to separate the ruling class Manchu from the Chinese or Han Chinese who are under the ruling. Very few Chinese will allow permission to enter the gate unless you have certain power or fortune, and those without both remain in the area we're about to explore. An area was seen as a big slum for poor, exploited Chinese. From what you can see today, there is no way you can imagine that this used to be the biggest slum in Beijing. But today, it's the prime place that all the young in Beijing want to spend their weekends. So, we will discover the story how it becomes the hottest spot for young generation to have fun from slum. And we'll show you the evolution of this prime commercial area in Beijing to what it is today. Pretty magical, right? This side they've got like all the really advanced kind of futuristic looking buildings. On the left side, you got these old kind of falling down ancient buildings. Right, on to our first stop. Let's go! <laughs> more and more Chinese came from all over the country and hoped to find opportunities, but they were forbidden from entering the imperial city. They had no choice but settled here. The south of Beijing, which is also called the Chinese city. But these people from different places didn't want to travel all the way across the country just to stay in a slum forever. They started to make a small business area and exchange goods from other parts of the country, cloth, leathers, wood, jade, and goat. Here you go. It might be hard to tell today, but this street actually used to be one of the most famous streets in Beijing and one of the most prosperous, the Jewelry Street. Uh, about 300 meters long and along the street they have over 100 jewelry shops. They would sell everything from jade um, to precious gold, precious metals, um, to even uh, pearls, all sorts. And we're going to try and find the largest of these shops, um, who the owner is known as you know, the, the King of Jade, uh, the largest shop which is called Da Yuan Sing, and see how it looks today. I think I think it's I think we won't be able to find it because now it's just new shops around. Um, it's probably hidden in one of the restaurants, which is basically the new business model around this street, and I see a lot of delicious restaurants. I think it's time for us to decide maybe pick one of them to do our dinner. So unfortunately we couldn't find the Yuan Sing jewelry shop, probably because it's now moved somewhere else or closed down. So like everything in Beijing, the city has changed so much over the years. So even though 100 years ago this was mostly just focused on jewellery, today other industries have sprung up as well, including lots of uh, food and beverage shops such as this one. So this street is really diverse nowadays and um, just full of all sorts going on, all sorts of smells and flavours. You can find anything you want really here, so that's why it's so popular for people to come here and uh, you know buy, 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 uh, buy goods. Beijing's always full of surprises. You turn a corner and you're just uh, you know, confronted with so many different alleyways. Around here you can find anything. I mean, they're, they're selling silk, and I can see leather belts over there as well. What we've got here, we've got, they're here they're selling like the, the special snacks of Beijing. So you're probably gonna have some, you know, dry peaking ducks and some sweets, the kind of things that people, you know, Beijing people would love to eat over the years. The area started to change from a slum to a flourishing commercial area after hard work from a few generations. We also found it became an old CBD area in the early 20th century. So this street here used to, in olden days, be the CBD of Beijing, where most of the main banks and other business centers were. And we can see here, uh, there's a huge kind of block bank here, already built in the 1920s, which um, was one of the big financial institutions inside China of the day. And along this road are plenty of other banks and other old commerce uh, buildings from the time. And we ran into this huge bank, which looks more like something out of London than it does out of Beijing. Um, it used to be the old uh, Salt Bank, which the, uh, during the time in Chinese history there was a lot of warlords who amassed a lot of money 
and obviously they created their own banks, banks to kind of manage this wealth. And that was the bank that they created. Impressive. Now, it's probably the most vibrant business area that's very close to the center of China's symbol of political power, the Chang'an Street. It attracts young people and families to enjoy their weekends and holidays here. They also attract brands from all over the world. So we've now arrived at a junction of sorts. So here is interesting because it's a junction of the new and the old and a junction of commerce as well. So on the left side here, you know, we've got these sort of old style of industry. You've got more retail style and actually it's more traditional as well and more traditional buildings. On the right side over here, we actually have the new style. It's more obviously more modern buildings and it's more experiential kind of style of commerce. So we can go inside and have a look at what this experiential style of commerce is. Everyone I meet always supports me. One example of this new style of commerce is actually in the WeWork over my shoulder here. So as you can see, they've taken the old style of building. It's a mock-up of an old style of building. It's obviously newly built, but they've um, kind of uh, emulated the old style and they're delivering this new style of commerce. So another sign of pretty innovative uh, you know, commerce over here is this uh, Muzi Hotel or Catan Hotel. It's actually the first of its kind in the world. And interestingly, they chose this location to open this new hotel brand. Another example is the Starbucks Reserve. So I think there's only two of them in the whole of China. There's one in Shanghai and one in Beijing. And um, actually the Reserve is kind of a, is an offshoot of Starbucks, which is kind of rare in the world. And they're providing a more kind of premium kind of coffee service. They've actually got a coffee bar inside. They're selling some very rare coffee beans. And the experience is really like another level. here I think. All right, so I, I, am I going to be drunk after this? No, actually, so we, we just got these um, from the third floor. They have like a bar, bar settle. Is that a new thing? I know it's new for me, so I'm going to try. And this is their summer special. Um, they say this is non-alcoholic, even though you can get a coffee with alcohol inside mm. in the third floor. Uh, but this one, they use the barrel Oh, so it has the flavor of it. Yeah, ah, they smart. put the coffee bean inside the barrel of whiskey to give the coffee bean a bit whiskey flavor. So these are made of like the coffee beans from the whiskey barrel. Let's try it out. Let's see how it take is. Take the table off or put it in the top? Pop in the top. Okay. There are two different kinds, but I cannot, <laughs> I don't know which are which. Can't tell so. the difference. We can just try each. Right. Chin chin. Chin. Hmm. The whiskey flavor is quite strong. Yeah, it's got that flavor, right? Yeah. It feels like I'm drinking like a cocktail. cocktail. Yeah, it really feels like that. Yeah, but they say it's actually non-alcoholic. It's just pure I would never flavor guess, yeah. from the beans. Well, it's got the taste. It's got the, the flavor is of it, but there's no aftertaste. Yeah. Right, so if you have whiskey, the flavor is the same, but you don't have that whiskey aftertaste that you usually have. Yeah. Hmm. Actually, it's kind of nicer because the aftertaste could be a bit yeah. hard to take sometimes. You can feel like this taste is only when you take it, mm. when you first touch it, and then you can have the whiskey mm. after it. But you don't have to worry about the after effects. <laughs> Definitely no hangover. Can I try yours? Yeah, we can cop it. Oh, this is the lime one. Wow. This is like just pure, like whiskey beans, and this is like whiskey beans with lime. You mean the coffee with the whiskey, not whiskey beans? Oh. <laughs> How's the whiskey bean? <laughs> whiskey coffee beans. These are better. I like this is like good in summer, isn't it? 